We often talk about the concept of vote and voice in the owner room, and we think it's a really helpful tool when you think about who's engaged and how they're engaged in the owner room. So vote is really who has that decision-making power, who has legal control, who is the shareholder who votes the shares at the end of the day. Voice is the opportunity that for those who may not actually vote the shares, but who have an interest. So for example, beneficial owners, the beneficiaries of a trust, or next gens who don't actually own shares yet, but who are expected to own shares in the future. Voice is the opportunity for those individuals to become involved and engaged as owners and prepare for future ownership of their family business. So a great example of this is a family that we worked with that had, was a group of cousins. And all the cousins in the across two generations of G3 and G4 were the beneficial owners of a business. They were the beneficiaries of a trust. And there was one cousin who had the voting control. That one cousin was the trustee. You can imagine how that could create some challenging dynamics, right? There's one individual who gets to make the decisions on behalf of this large group of individuals who have varied interests. You can also imagine the burden that that places on that individual. And so at one point, that individual said, I may be the trustee, but it's really important for me to be doing this collaboratively. I want to do this with my cousins, my nieces, and nephews. That family decided to put an owner council in place. And that owner council was the opportunity for the next gens and those cousins who were not trustees to have a real voice. So it was a place for the trustee to go. There was a big decision. What is it that the owners want? That was a place to go and understand what does that broader group of owners want? And on many issues, the, the trustee actually just deferred to the owner council. Technically, the trustee was the one who had control and got to vote the shares, but really they were making the decisions that that broader group of beneficial owners were interested in. So this had a really positive impact on the system as a whole. I think, first of all, that trustee, the pressure was taken off that individual. It didn't quite feel like such an isolating position. It also allowed the full group to build relationships. You had this owner council where there were a group of cousins and their next gens who were all in the room together, and they were learning how to talk about and make difficult decisions together. This also allowed an opportunity to engage that next generation who in other situations, it was going to be years and years and years before any member of the next generation was trustee. And, and it might just be one member of that next generation that's trustee. But this was the opportunity to really get that next generation engaged and involved in the family business, which was really important to both that individual who's the trustee, but also that broader group of cousins in the senior generation. So if you're the trustee, and you have that decision-making authority, or you're the senior generation and the next generation doesn't own any shares yet, I really encourage you to think about how do you collect the voice of the other people in your family whose voice matters. In particular, you think about who are the beneficial owners? Who is that next gen? Make sure you're thinking about how to engage them. And is that that you need to put another governance structure in place to give them an opportunity to have voice? Or is it simply that you, know, you need to make sure that the senior generation is taking the opportunity to gather and to engage with that next generation or the, those beneficial owners to understand their perspectives and help those to inform decision making?